good evening and a warm welcome to the program. Thank you for joining us. We are coming to you from the Kampala Serena Conference Center Nile Room and tonight mm -hmm. we'll be talking about uh, cerebral palsy. We have in the studio with us Joan who came with her daughter um, <laughs> who has had cerebral palsy and her daughter is now seven years old mm -hmm. and Joan wanted us to, to know more about it and to also share their story. Welcome Joan. Thank you so much for coming. Joan Nabasumba. You're welcome. Um, and also in the studio we have um, Dr. Richard Idro, who is from uh, a consultant with Molago Hospital, and he's also a senior lecturer <coughs> pediatrics at Macquarie University. Welcome, Dr. Idro. Thank you. Good evening, viewers. All right. And John, would you like to introduce Tesla? Um, she's Tesla, Chirabo, Nalisba, seven years old, and she's my firstborn. She's your firstborn. She looks excited. She is. I don't know whether she knows she's on TV, <laughs> <laughs> but she's been excited since morning. Okay. Yeah. This excitement at this point. Pardon? This is high excited now. Yeah. Pardon? This is high excited. Yeah. That is how she is when she's excited. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's say it as it is. Where does your story begin? Um, Josephine, I actually think that my story began with the signs. I think it all began with the signs of the pregnancy because when I was pregnant, I had multiple complications. I had fibroids. Then um, I also had her as a bleach. She was bleach. Then I also used to have like a lot of dizziness. I would just faint out of the blue, just like that. When you were pregnant, this right from the beginning or at a later stage of pregnancy? Actually, from the first trimester, there was some little bit of bleeding, so I had to go through a lot of medication. So it started right from the time of the first yeah. trimester. Right. Yeah. See, Tesla has come down. It seems she understands now that you're getting into the serious situation. Okay, so I hope so. When you were when you gave birth, mm -hmm. was it a, what kind of delivery was it? It was um, an emergency caesarean section. It was at, at 32 weeks. Actually, I remember um, I wasn't even ready. I had just gone for a checkup. Then the doctor just told me, like, Joan, you know what? Are your things ready? If you're ready, just go back and pick them because I think we are going to do the operation at around 7 p.m. So I had, I, I had to go back home and prepare my stuff, then come back for the operation. Yeah. You're talking about her coming into the world yeah. and she's excited again. Yeah. So you had her, she was a bridge baby you said? Yeah. And it was a C-section? Yeah. What happened after she came out? What did the doctors say? What was your immediate reaction? Um, after she came out, the scores were eight. They told me the scores were eight. But out on, of? Out of ten. But on presentation, mm -hmm. she, she, she had club foot, like her feet were this shape. She had club foot and she was okay. She never went into intensive care unit. She was never put on oxygen. Like everything seemed fine apart from the club foot. So we thought everything was okay because they told me the club foot would be corrected. I had not to worry. So I was okay until the time that we left and went back home. But being a baby, of course, I could not tell whether there is any other problem apart from that. The babies, uh, the babies are usually asleep, they are calm. You don't expect a lot from them. So it was really difficult for me to, de to determine whether she had any form of disability. So yeah. when did you begin now to see changes? Um, when she was four months, she started having convulsions. So I was like, what is happening? And her father, I was like, what is really happening? Have you seen like something like this before? We were both young and I didn't know what exactly was happening. So we went to hospital. And when I went to hospital, the way she was convulsing was like she would bring forward her, her, uh, her arms, then the eyes would widely open. So when I took her to hospital, they told me that she had flu. That's what I was they told. They said flu? They said she had flu. Okay. So when I went 
back home. They just gave me medicine for flu, but she continued doing that and I got a little bit scared. So that's when I went to Molago Hospital and they told me to do a test called EEG, an EEG. So I met with Dr. Idro. I went and did the EEG. Then we brought back the results that he had to interpret to me. Okay. Yeah. So Dr. Idro, they, they bring the results. And what do you see? So at the age of about four months, uh, Tesla presented to us with um, a severe form of epilepsy, um, which we call West Syndrome. Um, it's, it's a rare form of epilepsy, but uh, which uh, severely um, damages the brain in children. And it makes children retard. And, um, and, and that is what we told mom, that uh, your baby has um, this uh, infantile spasms. Those type of convulsions, we call them infantile spasms. They make the babies tend to fold inwards, both the head going downwards, the arms and the legs. Occasionally, they may extend out, um, um, out, outwards. Okay. And uh, so we started her on, on, on treatment okay. immediately. Because the, the longer you, uh, you delay with that particular type of epilepsy, the more damage it causes to the brain. So at what point did you then get to cerebral palsy? Um, so let, um, because it, um, this particular condition tends to damage the, the, the brain in children, um, cerebral palsy, if I may um, define it, is, is a disorder in which uh, children have a problem with the use of their muscles. So mo a, disorder, a motor disorder, um, a, which involves the use of the muscles or the coordination or the application of skills. So how you use the hands to pick up things, okay. um, how you coordinate the hand movements to perform particular tasks, and how you achieve mov um, uh, mov movement. And um, it is most often um, uh, due to damage which occurs to a developing brain. Um, so that's when the baby is still in the womb? It, no, not necessarily uh, the, um, in, the, in the womb. This damage can occur when the baby is still in the womb. It can occur during the time of birth or it can occur during the first, um, usually the first three years of, of life. Even after birth, the brain continues, develop, um, continues developing, especially in the first three years of life. So in, in the damage occurring to a specific part of the brain during that period can result in what we call um, um, cerebral palsy. John, when, you learned, when did you learn that, that this was more complicated than you thought? Oh my God, I remember the day I went with her to take the results to Dr. Idro. When he told me about that condition, I had a lot of questions running through my mind. I remember we were many patients, many were, out, were waiting outside, and I remember I asked him like a bunch of questions. Like, doctor, how am I going to manage this? Is my, going, is my child going to go to school? Is she going to be able to talk? Will she sit? Will she run around like the rest of the children? And the doctor was like, okay, Mommy Tesla, let me tell you the truth. She's going to grow, but she's not going to be like the other children. She won't be number one in class. She might be able to go to school, but she can never be number one in class because her brain is already damaged and the damage is permanent. So we, we, you're just going to help her live like a normal life, just like the rest of the children. So that's when I knew that I just la had to adopt to her just the way she is so that life could move on. Was one of the questions you were thinking or you asked, did I do something? To bring this on her, I had to bring. I, I had to ask myself that question a lot of times, and even the people around me, like people from the community, the things that they would talk about, the things they would comment on, like maybe I'm the reason 
the child is like that. There are a lot of things, but I also had to ask myself, I had to go back like from the time of pregnancy, what went wrong, what did I do wrong, what did I, didn't, didn't I do right? It had like a lot of questions in my mind. Yeah. I think usually the question is, did I take my medicines? Did I, you know, was I exercising? All of did those I questions eat well? come to, yeah, did yeah. I eat well? Mm. What, what's the answer to that question? Dr. Um, usually the answers are not part of that. And uh, if, 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 I may il um, if I may illustrate, okay. um, we, have, um, we have two lobes, uh, two hemispheres of the brain. There's the left side and, and, um, and, uh, and, and the, the right, right side. And, the right side. and then the brain is divided in, um, in several lobes. So there's a frontal lobe, um, there's a temporal lobe, there's a parietal lobe, an occipital lobe. Each, each, each of these areas of the brain does different functions. Now, in, uh, in cerebral palsy, a uh, uh, child, whether in the womb or during the time of birth or in the first three years of life, sustains some brain damage. And usually it is along this there's a line here. So this black line? This black line. Okay. Uh, and we call it the central sulcus. And along that black line, the, that region controls the movements of the hand, the movements of the leg, the movements of the neck, the movements of the face. So anything with movement is usually in, along, in that, the along that black line. Also, in the middle of the brain, there are some centers. We call them basal ganglia. Those ones then modify they are not seen on this image, okay. but they modify the movement. So, in um, maybe if you just use the, the other one, um, it could be a bit. Yes. The, so there are some deeper structures inside inside the brain. We call them the basal ganglia. They okay. then modify these movements, which are represented along that central circles. So, in the womb, um, sometimes there is an ascending infection from the birth canal. And it um, it it may enter the 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 coverings uh, of of the of the fetus which is growing, and this may damage the the brain in the baby. So the baby the growing the brain fetus can sustain a stroke, just like the elderly getting a stroke. Actually, the fetus also can sustain a stroke. Two, sometimes um, the mother may fall sick from different forms of infections. And uh, these infections can cross over and damage the brain. Um, and uh, the baby later on may develop cerebral palsy. But uh, there are many other conditions um, around the time of birth. If, uh, like in the case of, um, of baby uh, Tesla, she, she was born prematurely. Um, and it was an emergency caesarean section, and she was born at 32 weeks. 32 weeks, usually a fetus stays in the womb up to 40 weeks. So any fetus who is born before uh, 37 completed weeks, we say, has been born prematurely. And uh, premature babies are at risk of so many um, um, uh, so many complications. Um, they are, the blood vessels in the brain are not yet well developed. They can burst and bleed in and it damages the brain. Um, they, it may, they may sustain injuries of this same path and especially affects the lower limbs. Um, many of them, even small changes in, uh, in oxygen, just shorter periods of lack of oxygen during the birth um, can in, uh, damage the brain. Which is uh, what you suspect happened yes, with? Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, so that, um, that likelihood it's possible this predisposed the, the baby to these conditions. But um, in this particular case, um, I think the bigger problem then came with the epilepsy, the West syndrome. So this uh, West syndrome is really a very da um, a, a damaging type of epilepsy in, in children. But in other children, um, even the ones who are born at term, um, if there's a delay in delivery of the baby coming b coming out or a difficult delivery, uh, you may the babies may su sustain birth injuries and they are at risk of um, of um, cerebral palsy. Then the others after birth, children may uh, children may get meningitis, 
others may get infections like cerebral malaria and this may damage the uh, the, the brain of these children and they may get uh, cerebral palsy so really okay. there are so many different and one one other one other common cause of cerebral palsy is um sometimes a baby is born and then after a few days the baby becomes yellow um uh, parents say omana elna and kaka this uh, appears appears yellow and uh, this often is due to um incompatibilities of in the in in the blood types okay. yes and so this yellow discoloration we call it jaundice can go and and, and affect stain the uh, affect the brain. I was actually going to ask if that wasn't jaundice, but then they yes. tell most parents put the baby in the sun. Yeah. But maybe we need to get Tesla out of her chair. It seems she just wants you to hold her and share her excitement. So let's yeah. take a short break, and we'll be right back. talking about um, living with cerebral palsy. Um, Joan is sharing her story with her daughter, Tesla, who was just here with us. We've allowed her to go and rest on the other side of, of uh, the hall. Dr. Idra, you were speaking, you said something about the baby having a stroke, the fetus having a stroke, and we're trying to understand, to wrap our heads around that. What would cause a fetus to have a stroke? Um. Uh, just a, a number of things can happen um, when a baby is in the womb. So um, as the baby de develops, um, the blood vessels which supply a particular part of the brain may develop abnormally, um, and that part of the brain may, as a consequence, get damaged. Okay. It may be but the majority of cases often is just an ascending infection. So an infection going through the birth canal, entering into the membranes covering the baby. Are we talking baby. about UTIs? Um, not UT UTIs. UTIs usually ascend into the bladder, but just like um, the urinary tract infections where you have infections ascending um, through, through the urethra into the bladder, but this one, uh, these are cases where you have the infection ascending through the birth canal, okay. uh, into okay. through the cervix, into, into uh, the membranes around the baby. Okay. And around the world now, uh, uh, recent studies suggest that this actually is one of the uh, leading causes of um, uh, cerebral palsy in, uh, in children. And often the mother may actually not know that such a thing has it's happening has, has because happened. I'm trying to think to myself most women I, I've had infections when I was pregnant it, um, Joan you said you had you had infections when you were pregnant yeah. mm -hmm. how how is it then that this is not a big deal it's 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 it's, it's a big deal um, the two two three things one um, is is uh, is that many of these infections are asymptomatic uh, you do not realize that it is occurring. Two, um, even after the babies are born, one in uh, some of the countries already they have started uh, doing um, what we call screening, pat looking particularly for a particular type of infection called group B streptococcus. We have not been doing this uh, fre uh, frequently in our environment because um, currently there is actually a particular study which is trying to look at this uh, to estimate what the burden of this, uh, this, this is. But it is all forms of um, of, of infections, different forms of bacteria. It's not just okay. a single one which which is responsible for this particular one. We well, were speaking earlier and you said two in, in out of Uganda in, in Europe, two oh. out of every 1,000 one th oh, children one yes. has cerebral palsy. Yes. What of, you, of Uganda? Mm. So world, um, worldwide, um, cerebral palsy is one of the leading disabilities in, uh, in children. In, um, in uh, different parts of in the developed world, it's about two children out of every 1,000 have uh, cerebral palsy. We, um, my colleague, Dr. Angelina Kakosa, um, about four years ago, uh, conducted a survey in uh, Iganga and Mayuge. And um, in that area, they, they examined all children ages two years up to uh, 17, uh, 17 years. So, um, and uh, in that community, they identified that uh, three 
out of every 1,000 children have cerebral palsy. Um, however, this, um, um, we think that the burden is actually higher. much higher than this. And the reason being that um, that study focused on children two years and above, and which is really most, uh, the focus of most studies with cerebral palsy. But uh, many of the children who are severely brain injured at birth, um, they tend to have multiple other complications. And so we lose many of these children and many of them die earlier. So they may not have reached the age of two years. So we actually think that the burden is much higher than the three per thousand in our environment. John, we've, we, we've seen many mothers leave their children, even when the children are perfectly healthy. What's pushed you from Tesla at a very young age to now to continue to do your very best for her? Um, initially, it wasn't easy, not at all. But I think uh, one of the things that kept me going is I always hoped for the better. I always hoped that she's going to be fine. Like, it wasn't easy for me to actually accept like it is always for most mothers. Because I'm telling you, I went to several places. I went to churches. I've visited hospitals. I've, different, I've, I've di visited different places just to see her better. So the hope that I had that my child one day is going to be fine is what kept me going. Then also, I thank God because most, most parents of children with special needs, their mothers are abandoned by their husbands. But I thank God because the father of Tesla never left. He was always there to support me. Yeah, because he loves me should. very much. As he should. <laughs> As, As he they should. all should. <laughs> yeah. um, what's been the journey like in terms of costing for the treatment? Oh, God. Um, the life of a child with cerebral palsy is really fragile and very expensive, not only when it comes to medication, but when it comes to a lot of things. It ranges from different issues, right from caretaking, the medication, maybe if you don't have the caretaker, the daycare center where you can leave the child, the feeding, Everything rotates about money. Everything rotates about money. And how do you manage? Um, I do work. Then um, there are NGOs that have come up. For example, there is um, Mokisa Foundation. I believe that is the first NGO that I went to to seek for help. You know, after going to Molago, I met many mothers of children with special needs because when I was still at home, I thought that maybe I'm the only one. I would cry, like I cried and cried my eyes out. But I was like, when am I going to stop crying? When I went to Molago and met with different mothers, like it was something different. That was the moment I stopped crying. I was like, oh my God, I'm not alone. And I think my child is looking great as compared to some other children. So I think I, thought I, I should be thankful to God for this. So as we kept on interacting, as we kept on interacting, I got to know about different organizations that have come up to help such children. So I visited Mukisa Foundation. Mukisa Foundation, that was in 20, that was in 2013. I visited Mukisa Foundation and I was able to access like some free services like physiotherapy, occupational therapy, and I'm really grateful for, for, for Florence because she welcomed me with like an open heart and I was never charged anything. Mm. So one of the ways that um, we've managed to chop on the expenses is getting NGOs that know these children and they are providing the services freely. Yeah. Do you work? You said you work? Yes, I do work. So when you're at work, who is with uh, Tesla? Um, Tesla goes to Angel Center for Children with Special Needs. Okay. She goes to, 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 to the daycare section. I leave her there in the morning, then I pick her in the evening. Yeah, the director is Rose. I think she's I've met her. We, she we had her son. Yeah, we had him on the show sometime. Yeah, she's really good, and she really has the heart for children. At least I know when I go to work, 
my child is safe, I know she's going to feed, I know she's going to get the physiotherapy, occupational therapy, and at least my heart can be settled. It can't be 100% because you never know what happens, but at least I know my child is somewhere safe with the rest of the children. And she looks really happy. Yeah, she's a happy girl. <laughs> she's always jolly, yeah. So you have another daughter after Tesla? Yes, I have two children. You have two. Did you worry when you were pregnant with her? Oh my God, I was so worried. Because Tesla was just five months old when I discovered that I was pregnant again. And I'm telling you, it scared me to death. It scared me to death. The, the, the father was like, what are we going to do? We are still trying to take care of her and you're pregnant again. Of course, I didn't know I was pregnant, but it just came so but this time i was like more cautious i had to do everything like the way the doctor instructed me because i was like is she going to be like tesla throughout the pregnancy i'm telling you i wasn't settled at all was it the same did you have similar was it an easier pregnancy it was an easier pregnancy compared to tesla's because i never had any nausea i fed well like i was healthy I looked healthy and you can imagine the way I, I used to carry Tesla around. My stomach was big as this. I remember one time I went to Dr. Idro with Tesla and everyone was looking at me even on the way like, is this woman really pregnant? Is she carrying a little baby? And you know, children with special needs don't grow at a faster rate like the normal children, like the typical children. So she looked like a baby despite the fact that she was two years old. I mean, I mean, despite the fact that by then she was, she was still months. Five months? No. Oh, much older. Much older. Like, I think she had approached Aya, but she looked like, oh my God. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Okay, while you tend to <laughs> Tesla's sister, okay. Dr. Idro, what is the cost okay, of raising a child with special needs, especially um, somebody like Tesla? Now, um, Josephine, I don't think we have worked out what the cost is, but let me put it in perspective. Yes. So, um, a child with cerebral palsy has a brain injury, and um, the just because they, ha um, they have brain injury affecting that motor center um, does not only mean that it is that center which is affected. So they may have uh, injuries to multiple other parts of the, of the brain. So some of them may have injury affecting the occipital lobe, which is responsible for vision. So some of these children may have visual impairment. Others may have injuries here um, in the parietal lobe, and um, it may affect hearing. They may have problems with hearing. Uh, the parietal lobe also controls um, managing things in space. Um, they may have problems with uh, navigating spaces. Many of them have epilepsy. Um, the majority have learning, uh, Disability. learning disabilities. Just one second, does yeah. Tesla still have epilepsy? Um, she has, she gets seizures. She's, they're, they're being managed by anticonvulsants, but she gets them. Okay. Like in a week, she can get them like once, and she can get a really strong one, which can last for, for about um, 20 seconds when she's just like this. Mm. Yeah. All right, I'm going to ask you to explain a bit more on that, yes. but let's take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Okay. Welcome back. We're coming to you from the Kampala Serena Conference Center in our room, and we're talking about uh, living with cerebral palsy. Joan um, came with her daughter Tesla to speak to us about it, and Dr. Idro as well. I, I, I saw Kepra, Kepler come on stage, and you were shaken, but it's all right. <laughs> she wanted to come to her mother, so it's okay. Um, Dr. Idro, you were still telling us about the cost. Yes. So, um, children with. Um, uh, cerebral palsy, because the brain is affected, it r literally affects all functions. Let's start with the, the gastrointestinal, that is the path for food. Many of them you have feeding pro uh, problems, especially the ones where even that basal ganglia, which I was saying, that 
in a part is damaged. Coordination is a problem. The mother wants to feed the child. The tongue comes out. The child goes in different postures. Feeding becomes a problem. Two, as food goes down to the stomach, usually there is a valve between that pipe, uh, the esophagus, the gullet, and the stomach. But because the brain is injured, that valve doesn't work very well. So food tends, um, if you put the child to lie down, the food tends to come out. So they reflux. They feel a lot of pain because the food in the stomach is acidic and the food which is in the gullet will not be acidic. And so they may vomit out the food, they may reflux, or it may, if it comes out, it can enter into, into the to the lungs, then the child chokes, coughs, they get repeated uh, infections. As the food goes down into the intestines, um, the intestines don't move very well, and so they are often constipated, and um, so constipation m really complicates their life. And because if the food is coming out, it's hard, it can damage uh, the anus, you get wounds, and so we really try to, to manage constipation. That is just the this That's is just one system. We're looking at yes. So the respiratory system, um, breathing, because it may reflux, they get repeated infection. The chest wall is not strong enough. They are not able to cough very well, and so they are admitted repeatedly with pneumonias, uh, chest infections. Epilepsy is another one. We have just had the description of epilepsy. So many of them have epilepsy. It may be difficult to treat, like in Tesla. Tesla, we have had to change medications so many times, and she went eventually taking to, uh, medications which are really expensive, um, which uh, those tablets, even in a tiny little baby, will, will cost more than 5,000 shillings per day. In, and in the older child, like at her age, then you start going close to 10,000 shillings in a day, because she went through several generations of, um, of an anti anti anticonvulsants. It, um, many of them, because they are, they are not able to move very well, they become vitamin D deficient, so we need to put them in, in the sun, but also to get uh, so vitamin supplements, give food which is high in content with vitamin D, otherwise the bones are brittle, and, uh, and, and then they get lots of, um, lots, lots of pain. Many of them have hearing problems, vision problems, which need oh. correction. So it's really so man, many things. The cost is enormous. I get, yeah. Yes, I understand enormous now. Mm. John, um, what, what are your fears now? Do you worry about, as she grows older, dependence, her security, uh, you know, her life going forward? Yeah, I, 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 I have many fears for her future, but my biggest fear is, like, if, if I ever died and left, would there ever be someone who would be willing to take care of her? Because even as I'm talking right now, it's difficult. Even if you're going somewhere, it's difficult to get even a relative or a friend to stay with her. I'm happy for the few who have been there for me, but it's even difficult to get someone who can help you care for, uh, for her for even hours, just hours. So my greatest fear is if, if I ever left before her, like, would there ever be someone who can help me take care of her? That is my biggest worry. And um, of course, there are other worries, like, how am I going to manage carrying her when she grows like a, a little bit bigger than that? Because even the way she is, she's already heavy. She's already heavy for me to lift. Um, What, what kind of, of help do you have now, um, away from the NGOs that have supported you? What kind of help do you have that you're able to do what you do now to be able to sustain her? Um, I'm a social worker. I'm working. The job has been part of what has been, ab been able to help me support her. Then um, I also want to thank I Am Children's Family because through that organization I was able to meet a beautiful couple that has helped me with medical insurance for her. At least I know when it comes to these other diseases like infections, of course the medication um, for, for, for the seizures might not be covered wholly, 
but at least I know I'm covered for the infections, malaria, and other simple diseases that do affect her. Okay. So that is how I've been able to like sustain her. Then also the support from the parents' groups, because we as parents of children with special needs, there are times when we come to think that maybe no one understands us not even our own parents, but when we come together as a group, we tend to talk openly about the issues that are affecting our children. We laugh about certain things about our children, then that emotional support that we need to keep ourselves going. Like the support groups have been like a motivating factor for me to keep going because you know, like you have other people who are in the same situation as you and they have kept you. Like really going. I was going to ask how how do um, and I was going to ask Dr. Idro, her support system. Um, you came with your cousins who help you in, in, in to help you with Tesla as they are doing now. Yeah. The, the support system that you have, how do you ensure that they don't lose motivation? Mm -hmm. Because even for a, a child who is um, a normal child, people get tired of watching your child for you, you know. But now a child with special needs, how do you? How do you help that situation? Mm. Now, um, really, that kind of help is really important for for the mother, not only for for to relieve her with from getting extremely tired, um, having a poor sleep because even the uh, the baby can have problems at at night, but also her mental well-being because it's really critical that as a parent that. Um, uh, her, her mind is taken care of um, and so available to, to us in, um, in many of our units we have like the physiotherapy units um, which, which helps with the, the, the motor abilities and in, in most hospitals we also have the occupational therapies which deal with um, this um, adapting the environment of the child okay. to, to, to the disabilities and but we are, um, we are not well um, in actually most of our units are not really well adapted to or mm -hmm. well equipped with um, the social aspects uh, so uh, the social services in the hospitals usually uh, have one or two or three people and um, and they are not able to attend to to the needs of um, of many parents so that's why we end up sending many of the parents to the NGOs around okay. and for example around Kampala there are several so th those in uh, around Rubaga area most of them were sent to Mokisa Foundation those to around Bukoto some of them were sent to Dons there are different groups like that where we send them to try to support support um, to support these parents because the children require a really a lot of little support in uh, some other countries um, out of uh, here um, they have uh, what they call respite so um, over the weekends for example parents are able to or, um, to get additional support where the children are taken uh, from them or they take the children to another family or sp uh, specialized care services yeah. and uh, they give the, ch uh, the parents some time to, to rest, respite, so that uh, some 72 hours or something like that, that they are not completely dependent on them. Okay. We don't have that kind of system in, uh, in, in, in our country. Um, however, having said that, um, not all the children with cerebral palsy are severely uh, impaired as, for example, like Tesla. Uh, Tesla. I was going to ask yes. you about the quality of life mm. for somebody like Tesla. Yes. Um, so the um, cerebral palsy, uh, palsy ranges from mild impairment to moderate impairment to to sev uh, severe impairment. And uh, many children with a mild to moderate impairment, they actually get up they eventually they will walk um, they are going to be uh, they will uh, be able to do many things and that's one of the things which I had presented to to her that the majority of children actually get up um, the ones with mild one and a half years two years they will get up the ones with severe between three and a half years to five years they're up they're able to eventually lead an independent life although with some degree of, of impairment. Okay. But like for Tesla, Tesla is completely dependent on, um, on, on, on care, and she will really require um, uh, care, supported care for most of her life.
Okay, so mm -hmm. that's really to say there's no treat, there's no cure. It's really just N no. There is there is no cure for cerebral palsy. It is the different therapies that the therapies tend to improve the function, okay. so that the person is able to utilize these functions better. But there is no cure for um, for cerebral palsy. And may I take this opportunity maybe to say something to to our listeners? Um, in the past few. Um, the past two years, uh, um, we have had many parents um, going to, to 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 India. People coming to us that um, there are some hospitals which are giving stem cell therapies, and um, that it will cure uh, cerebral palsy. It will cure autism. There is no good such evidence that such therapies at the moment will offer such such uh, such cures. And many of these things are really. Um, they are experimental treatments. There is no definite um, answer that it will do it. it. Will and in fact, that the majority of them do, don't do not do it. So the little pa money which parents have, which they, they could have devoted to the care of improve and improving the life of the children, is ends up being spent in uh, some. And so it's something which I'll discourage until we have a lot more information. That it, and it can actually have uh an effect uh, or change. Yes, an, an effect situation. or change, yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, John, what's been the impact on you? Hmm. The impact. The impact has been like enormous. Um, it has, Tesla's affected me in different, Tesla's condition has diff affected me in different ways. For example, when it comes to my career, I remember when she was, before she made two years, I had to totally leave my work. I had to leave, I had to abandon my career just to take care of her. And I decided to stay at home just to watch over her. But as time went on, I was like, eh, my daughter is sick, but she's not sick of malaria, that it is going to heal after a week. For how long am I going to, sup I mean, to sit down and watch her like this? So I had to, to pick up myself, I had to be strong and decide to leave her at home, then start to work again. But for some time, I abandoned my work. Then the other issue is also about balancing the love for the rest of the family members. Like you've seen my, my daughter, my second daughter. Yeah. <laughs> I remember one time she, she, she came and told me that, Mommy, you love Tesla so much, you love her more than me. I was like, I even felt like crying inside because I had to sit her down, however little she is, however young she is, I had to sit her down and explain to her that Tesla needs more attention because she's special, she's sick, she needs to, to be helped like throughout for the rest of her life, 24 hour, say, 24 hour clock she has to be under the care of someone. I can leave you there to play alone, but I cannot leave her alone because I have to watch over her. She might choke, she might vomit, she might poo poo and she needs to be held, but you can do, your, you can do all those by yourself. Then also being that I'm the sole caretaker, like I have all the responsibilities. It is difficult to balance the love for my baby, then also be the there love, all the time. Be there all the time because of the stress, you know, the fatigue. There's a time when you reach and you're like, oh my God, how am I going to handle? There's a time that I felt like, am I, am I able really to keep going? But you just pick yourself all together and like come back. Then also financially, of course, like the doctor said, um, for example, Tesla is in a range of medication, starting from seizures, starting from, I mean, starting from seizures, then following constipation, then also muscle toning. Like she's on a lot of medications that are not in government hospitals, but you have to buy them. Like he said, they are really expensive. And at times the insurance might not cover all of them. Then, it has also been very difficult to get like customized equipment or specialized equipment, especially mobility equipment at a subsidized price. They are really expensive to get and whenever you have to go, whenever you have to go to get them, they are really expensive. But I thank God that the beautiful wheelchair that you saw her in, yeah. 
I got it free of charge from motivation that um, it was given to me by Mlago, but on behalf of motivation, I got it free of charge. I thank God for that. You then, okay. yeah, then, then, then also, um, you know, children with cerebral palsy are silently suffering. Many, many children, I mean, many parents have left them to die, not because they want, but because they don't have the ability to take care of them. So if they don't abandon them, they will leave them to die. They'll just leave them to die. But maybe I'll also take this opportunity to talk to those parents, to encourage them, like it's not the end of the world. It is a challenge, but it is doable when you give it your heart. It's not easy. It's really a challenging journey, but it is doable. When you show the world that you really love your child, they'll also love your child. They'll also come in to support you. But the more we lock them in houses, the more we think that they are curses. Of course, they are not curses. And that's the, the gap that we are trying to bridge, yes. to show the world that these children are valuable. They are very important. They should not be taken as curses. Because some people even fear, they think that their disabilities are infectious, yet they are not. Someone might fear even to talk to you or to touch you. They give you the judgmental stares. That is one of the challenges that I have I've had to face the judgmental stares from the people from the community. I've had to fight, even physical fights with people. But I thank God that I no longer have to fight. I find a way of talking to them. It depends on how you ask me a question. And I have to answer you and tell you what exactly happened to my daughter. Right. So it, that is how I've been practicing. Thank you so much, Joanne. So you're taking each day, really? Yep. as it comes yes um what would you like to us to carry home from this conversation doctor um in just one minute as our time yes. is spent one is um not only cerebral palsy um but seven out of a hundred children we have in our communities have disabilities um this various forms of uh, disabilities all these children can grow with, with bits of support. Some of them, the disability may be so severe it may affect them really adversely, they may be difficult, but with support we'll, we should be able to care for them. And uh, we have different forms, uh, kinds of levels of support and let, let us utilize them as much as is possible. I really like to thank uh, Mama Tesla, she has been a uh, um, quite regular in our clinics in uh, in Mulago, and she has really sustained. She has allowed this 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 girl to to grow. Um, we are really proud of what she has been able to do. It has been very hard. Her child has really had severe disability, but is an example that actually is is able. And when today, as I see Tesla smile, I'm really happy that something which which was so difficult is yes, I, she has made good out of. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. thank you so much. Thank you, Doctor, and thank you very much, uh, Joan, for coming to the show. Uh, time is very, very quickly just. spent. So uh, thank you, Tesla, and thank you, uh, I forget Kepler. what she's called? Kepler. Kepler, <laughs> the names I told you. And thank you so much, Kepler, and everybody else for coming to, sh to sh escort her as she shared the story. Well, that brings us to the end of our show for tonight. Thank you for watching. Coming up is NTV Weekend Edition.